Good morning, everyone. Welcome to ABC 25 Local Lifestyles. I'm Angie Humphrey. I'm Ron Rhodes with the woman in the Wednesday Adams dress. Look it's at what this. Dirt said. It was a Wednesday Adams dress. I love it. It'll never really be good. the same. Tommy Hilfiger will be just. Is that completely. Tommy Hilfiger yes. right there? I don't think Wednesday <laughs> Adams was basically one to wear Tommy Hilfiger. So you kind of one upped her a little bit. She there, also right? wasn't a senior citizen. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> she was she a much junior citizen. Yeah, she, she might be. be yeah. I mean, the one that did the original back in the 60s, I would imagine. <laughs> probably is at this point. Oh, yeah. At but least. at the same time, no, I tell you what, I mean, this is a beautiful day. I just love it. No, and, and we've got a million people in here. Yeah, I'm we've not got a pretty kidding. big crowd. That's a big crowd. All right, I'm ready for him, too. I am, too. And I, I'm really jealous of one dude suit. I can't lie. Well, it'll be obvious when you see the dude oh, suit. Oh, I'm so Ron jealous. Is. Did you Man. check his sock game, though? Oh, uh, let's check it out. We got You got a sock? Oh, it's oh, black socks. Oh, man, how disappointing. You... You're working it. I mean, the ankles up, it's all work, man. He brought it right here. When the ankles down, it's like you slacked. Uh, but that's all right. <laughs> you have to stay tuned to see what we're talking about. American Super Senior good. Communities serve veterans with some special offerings, and we're to learn more about the VA contract program. Gibson Southern Theater presents the musical Matilda, and they're the ones who are all dressed up today. Sock hop for the Olivia Newton-John cool. Cancer Research Project coming up, and we're going to tell you how you can attend. The Girl Scouts will name the women of distinction honoring women in leadership. And guns and hoses will fill yes. the Ford Center with excitement for 911 Gives Hope. If I'm Lots not mistaken, I could be wrong. I may be wrong on this, but I believe the overall series, Guns and Hoses, is tied. Am I right on that? Is it? Uh, it I mean, it is now a virtual tie. So this year's Guns and Hoses, at least for now, is going to be the tiebreaker in the all time oh, series. It? So, a little smack talking going. They're going to be on today and then a couple other times before that, so we'll yeah. see how the tension builds. Ah, let's start building that smack talk up right now. I'm all for it. Let's take a look They're outside. They're fighting over there right now. Look at them. No, well, kidding. no. So, just Somebody kidding. needs to separate them. I'm just kidding. Uh, let's take a look outside. I'm going to smack talk about the weather. This okay, is fantastic. Smack, uh, smack indeed. This Smack your lips, good. We've got plenty of sunshine. We're going to see a high temperature later today, right around 60 degrees. Yesterday we hit 60, and I think yesterday was just about ideal. Tomorrow we're going to hit 60 degrees and another good dose of sunshine. We are living right. That is the name of the game. So, and we're going to keep doing that because the rest of this week is going to be dry, Angie's, which is what exactly. Which is great. We need that. Uh, what yes. we need. So we're going to be seeing the temperature, and that's going to rise up through the 50s this afternoon. That's where it's going to be for most of the afternoon. We're going to nose our way up. Well, actually, hit 60 degrees. Look at the temperature. Surging. Yay. I'm going to have to up the ante on the high temperature, maybe put it in the mid 60s. Go right ahead. Yeah. Now, the, what about the wind? Because the, the wind, wind is was be, pretty powerful. The wind is going to be the factor. I mean, 15 to 25 from here on out, it's going to be kind of shifting more to the northwest. But at the same time, I mean, with 60 degrees, 65 degrees, I'm doing okay. I'll take it. Sunshine. Yeah, I'm but good. yeah, a lot of wind out there. So, I mean, it's not exactly a Yorkie dog alert yet. <laughs> but any dog a little smaller than a Yorkie, is that possible? That might be a bit of a problem if you're out walking. So hang on to them really Indeed. tight. Hang on tight to the leash. Let's get to today's Daily Dish. You all surely remember the family, the Flying Walindas. Well, yeah. Nick Walinda is getting ready to do one of the scariest stunts ever. It's his longest and highest attempt at a wire walk. The daredevil will find himself over an active volcano really? at Messiah Volcano National Park later tonight. He'll walk the length of six football fields on a one-inch wide steel cable. Uh, Willinda will have to wear an oxygen mask and compressed air to combat the plumes of toxic gas that will be coming from the volcano. And he'll also have a 13-pound tank on his back for really? oxygen. His wife announced on Instagram that she's going to be part of the act, too, but we won't know what it is. The entire walk should take 30 to 35 minutes. You because, know, no, huh? Is it just me? <laughs> yeah, really, I know. Is it just me, or has uh, Nick gained a few pounds? Oh, I don't know. I wonder I if that know. has a, a, a way of stabilizing him more. I don't know. I just remember Philippe Petit back in the day was as thin as a rail. I walked between the Twin Towers. Remember that back in the day? I 70s? do remember that. Okay. I can't watch it, though, because it just makes it's, me I know, but I, I will be watching this because I think it's fascinating. I really do. I'm, Nick Walinda, he's been doing this a lot lately. It's kind of his thing. Um, but what happens if his foot itches or something? You know what well, I'm saying? You He'll have to scratch it on that wire, I guess, because he needs to stay balanced. I mean, if he's going to walk that the length of six football fields yeah. on a one-inch wire over a volcano. Yeah. Like, I uh, did you sit at home one day thinking, you know, hey, honey, here's what I'm going to do. Oh, I tell you, he's going, hey, honey, here's what I'm going to do to bring in the bacon. Bring we're, on the bacon. I'm he may go over be volcano. the bacon over the volcano. <laughs> well done.
extra crispy Walinda. Yes. They'll go from being the flying Walindas to the crispy Walindas. So like, we'll see you. So you're oh, going to watch that, huh? Oh, I'll watch it. Well, well, it. Here's the deal. Now, if it's like pay-per-view and i got to pay like 100 bucks, I'm not doing that. Well, you know it'll be all over Facebook. But it's on Facebook. I'll watch it. Well, there was an unusual wedding guest in Ohio. Mendel, Mendel Weinstock uh, brought a llama to his yeah, sister's yeah. wedding. Now, the gag started about five years ago when Mendel says Riva was talking endlessly about her future wedding and a car with friends. So he blurted out if he had to go, he was going to bring a llama. Now, thinking that was just a joke, Riva accepted, uh, and, and you can now fast forward five years. And so Mendel fulfilled his promise. He rented a llama named Shockey. He, it was $400, and he even had a custom tuxedo made. So Shockey was not allowed into the wedding venue, so the bride's <laughs> friends placed two inflatable llamas at the sweetheart table. The, the bride says her brother definitely made her wedding memorable, and she's already started planning revenge. Yeah, you know she's going to say day. memorable, maybe not in a good way, but it's yes. definitely memorable. Hey, we're talking about her wedding, so that's kind of a big deal, right? Uh, she, well, she's all over every, the media because, I mean, she, this came from CNN. I okay, now, so. Angie, here's the thing. You have been married, and at your wedding, would you have wanted your brother to do that? Or would you have said, brother, just bring your two ingredient biscuits and just... Yeah, I would <laughs> definitely say, just bring the biscuits and leave the llama at home, yeah. Now, my brother would do that if he thought about it, trust me. I would think would. so. Now, what do you think her revenge is going to be? What do you think it could possibly be? Maybe she'll have a rhino at his wedding. <laughs> <laughs> a lion, I don't know. Well, Paris famed Louvre Museum has reopened today after the coronavirus outbreak in France. In a statement on Facebook, the world's largest art museum said its doors are open again. Now, people with entrance tickets from the days the museum was closed are asked to request a refund. So it's back open. People are moving around again in the city of light. Glad to hear that and glad to see that, that they're back in the Louvre. Now here's the deal, you were in Paris last year. I was. Did you go to the Louvre? I did. And what did you think was the most impressive thing there in the Louvre that they should be saving? The first thing they should save, you know, oh, they're having a the fire. Hammur the Code of Hammurabi. Okay. Oh, I just, I cried. I was standing there in front yeah. of, I can't believe I'm standing in front of this this thing, one of the first written laws, carved right. in stone. Yeah. Unbelievable. I went to the Antiquities Park because I'm really interested in all that. Right, yeah. right. Okay. But yeah. I guess it's a, it's a big museum. You could, you could spend it, oh gosh, a week you, there. Right? A, a lifetime and not see it all. Yeah. Really. I mean, you just go to one part. So if you think you're going to see it in a day, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. We will be right back with some sock hop fun.